Democrats in the U.S. House of Representatives say they've seen enough. They started an official impeachment inquiry of President Donald Trump after he admitted to asking the president of Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden. That after the president himself held up military aid approved by Congress to help Ukraine fortify its border with Russia. As we discuss this, however, for your reference as a viewer, it's Thursday morning as we sit here and the DNI is just finishing his testimony. Here's our opinion panel this week. We caught line regular and attorney Laura sanchez Reve on a week she's not traveling. Another one of our line regulars, public health consultant Michael Bird, is with us. From Connection Now and KK70, KKOB 770 Radio, Jeffrey Candelaria returns. And owner of Vox Optima Public Relations, Merritt Allen, is back with us as well. And Merritt, we're starting with you. No surprise, you might see this through a public Public relations lens because there's an election next year. Your summary of what you're seeing so far through that lens. What's your sense of it? Well, abso absolutely. And I, I think there, there are only a few things that can happen. And just looking at the realities right now in right. Congress uh, and Washington, I think we can make some, some pretty uh, educated guesses. Mm -hmm. So all this is is an inquiry. Right. So this is not drafting articles, mm -hmm. but I don't think Speaker Pelosi has been so cautious. I don't think she would let this go forward if she didn't think she had the votes to go forward with articles of impeachment. Mm -hmm. So I think we should expect through the fall and winter that's going to happen. Gotcha. However, um, the Senate still maintains a narrow majority. The Senate, um, the moderates have been weeded out. They've retired or passed away. Uh, and so... And also, in general, historically, the Senate has not moved to impeach. That's mm -hmm. uh, Andrew Johnson, uh, Richard Nixon resigned because he didn't have the votes, and Bill Clinton, the Senate, uh, uh, would not impeach. Mm -hmm. So my guess would be it's going to be a really ugly fall and winter. We're going to be bombarded with allegations and rage and anger from both sides. Twitter's going to blow up, mm -hmm. and probably nothing's going to happen. Interesting at the end of it all, right? Yeah, you never know. Laura sanchez Reve, let's talk about our, let's bring this home a little bit. Uh, we've got on the record, Ben Ray Lujan is for this inquiry. Uh, Deb Holland is for this inquiry. So Chiel Torres Small is sort of, is still on the fence. Is, is she, how long can she stay there without tipping one way or the other? Um, I think she's she's in a difficult position. It's, yeah. a, it's a difficult um, seat that she holds. Mm -hmm. It's a challenge for um, for anybody uh, to have a knee jerk reaction in any way as a right. Democrat from that right. district. And I think she has to be um, careful to listen to her constituency. If she's listening to her constituency and they are opposed to this mm -hmm. and prefer that she do something different or that she be focused on other issues, I think right. she has to reflect that. Right. So in terms of how long can she hang on, I, I, I don't know. I think that's a decision that she'll have to sure. make with her Depending staff. on what information comes out any given day, that kind of a thing. And I hope so. that every that every member of Congress is listening to their district. It doesn't right. surprise me that Ben Ray Lujan and, and Deb Holland are taking the position they're taking. Mm -hmm. I think the senators have to do what they what they have to do. and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's going to come down to, for them, um, what their district says. Right. Good point there. Jeffrey, your sense of this in the overall, I want to uh, hone in on something after your, your answer here, but your overall sense of this, is this something that you feel in your gut from what you've seen so far is worthy of all we've gone to at, to this point? Or should we have just stopped a while ago and said, hey, look. Well, from 10,000 know. feet, I don't think anything that we've uncovered thus far, and again, the there are so many balls in the air, so many things are evolving or right. de-evolving depending right. on your perspective. Mm -hmm. But what disturbs me just as a, an American citizen is on Tuesday, keep in mind in terms of timeline, on mm -hmm. Tuesday, uh, a number of the progressive liberals who hold and command a great deal of influence hate Trump so much, they had already leaped to a conclusion mm -hmm. that he had committed a crime, that had risen to a, a standard of high crimes and misdemeanors, mm -hmm. which is what the uh, impeachment standard is, on Tuesday night before they had read any of the material, mm -hmm. whether it would be the whistleblower material or the right. transcript right. Uh, material. The actual I, transcript, I find not the rough version. Disturbing. Right. And I think the formula that the progressives have used to remove Trump from office is pretty simple. It's an apocryphal, spurious formula. Accuse and the accusation becomes the crime. Everything in between, we will circumvent, whether it's Tuesday it was extortion, the other day it was, well, the material was released, it was probably altered or doctored, or today, Thursday as we're taping, now it's cover-up. So accuse, make it a crime, 
get him out of office at any cost. But let me ask you a question. Who is making the accusation? Because the accusation came from inside the intelligence Mostly Schiff. community, not from... Schiff leading... Hang, 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 hang. Right the accusation comes from the intelligence community, not from Democrats and not from any congressional committee. Right. They're just reacting to what's happened, yeah, you, flowed through the intelligence community. But from 10,000 feet, the mm -hmm. formula is find something of a transgression that Trump may have committed, mm -hmm. uh, call it a crime, okay. and then we'll figure out the rest later. At least that's my perspective. Okay. The first thing that they thought would stick. Exactly. Michael, your sense of it in the overall at well, this point. Uh -huh. There are two things, I guess, or mm -hmm. three things I would say. One is there's the legal process, mm -hmm. and that'll play out. Mm -hmm. And then there's the political process. I guess the third thing for me, I just got back from, from uh, D.C. and had a run on the mall uh, across the mall, past uh, to the Lincoln Monument, uh, mm. Washington Monument, and Vietnam, and um, the World War II Monument. And um, couldn't help but <clears throat> really reflect upon um, the reality that, that many people in this country have sacrificed mm -hmm. their lives mm -hmm. um, over the, history, the course of history because they believed in certain ethical and moral principles and um, and uh, I think we're, we're we're living a time where I wonder how moral a country we are, and how principled our leaders are, and um, how willing they are to um, step up, stand out, and 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 do the right thing mm -hmm. in the best interest of this nation. I guess the other thing I would say is bringing a, a, my native and perspective on this and the, hist and the history the native people had in this kind of have had in this country with this, this nation mm -hmm. is that I, I can't help but reflect on something that Indian, some Indian people have hearkened 200 years ago. And what they said was white man speaks with forked tongue. And that's not to say that all white men speak lie, mm -hmm. but it was based on their experience with a segment of Amer the American population. And um, I think um, for me, it kind of, it still rings true in many ways, in many places. And I think, um, I think this nation is facing a moral crisis. Um, I'm debating if I should start learning Russian or Chinese so that I'm prepared for what's coming next. But mm -hmm. we'll see. Yeah, so, well, there's a point there I want to ask uh, Merritt. Uh, literacy, sort of for the public, media literacy, uh, impeachment literacy, do you know I mean? process literacy. At some point, Democrats, it seems to me, have to go out in this country and explain this situation. You can't just drop this on people and go, okay, we're going to have this impeachment thing. Would you agree with that? There's a literacy thing that has to start uh, no, here No, absolutely, because um, mm -hmm. right now this is all personality-based, right. and it's all Trump. Yep. And you're either completely for him or you're completely against him. Um, I, I'm a, tr a Trump skeptic, rep skeptical Republican. That's how I label myself. Mm -hmm. And he has been able to withstand so much, really more than any other elective official that I can uh, can think of. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said in the earlier segment, I don't know that anything will happen. Mm -hmm. His base might not care. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> I think the the emotion and the ethos that Michael brought into his comments absolutely is what the Democrats uh, have to uh, bring out because, as you said on the radio yesterday, we also have to convert, um, you know, the purple districts. That's right. Um, That's right. Or we, they have to, con uh, uh, oh, I'm going to get torn apart for that, uh, the uh, purple <laughs> districts. Um, it's a fair point, though, that it's not just about the base. The base is set, you know, and the percentages are the percentages. Right. It's almost and, suburban and, and, and purple I think, folk. I think That's veterans right. are a tremendous uh, force here because... You know, I just got a note from a gentleman I, uh, I work with who noted that he used to work for the DNI. Uh. Um, and we take intelligence pretty seriously, right. and we tend to believe our intelligence. And with, with regard to just how we've uh, been operating with the military, with foreign affairs, apparently, allegedly holding Ukraine hostage against Russia to clean yeah. this mess up right. uh, for us, I think for veterans, this is very disturbing, and that is a huge uh, audience that's going to have to be uh, converted one way or the other. I never thought of that. That's interesting. Interesting point there. Laura, back to you on this. The idea that uh, Democrats are holding somewhat of a strong hand here. They've got 
close as we sit here on Thursday morning, taping us Thursday midday, uh, that 218 threshold in the House, and that's all well and good. We don't know what the actual vote will be when it gets there. But if we actually get to that point, what's your sense of how this is going to go down? Because it's a whole different thing. As Merritt mentioned with the Clinton thing, it was all well and good leading up to it. But when you had the actual vote, a whole lot of things changed after that. Do you know what I mean? Does the country really need that at this point, an actual impeachment vote? Are we at that point in your view? Well, I think there's a lot, a lot of information that will need to be um, reviewed more carefully. All of right. this has happened so quickly in the last week. Um, and, and every day there's sort of a new headline. Right. Um, I hope that people are taking a step back and actually reviewing the documents. Um, when they do and they actually read the letter, I think they see um, a lot more information than what's right. uh, catching the headlines. Right. I mean, the, the, uh, the whistleblower complaint didn't just talk about Biden. That's and right. uh, it also talked about <clears throat> purported pressure uh, from the president to, uh, on the Ukrainian president mm -hmm. um, to locate and turn over servers used by the Democratic National Committee <laughs> right. um, and, and examine the U.S. cybersecurity uh, related to that. Why are we, why is the president continuing to put pressure on anybody related to right. these allegations on Russia, about Russia right. and interference in the DNC? Th that's, that's just not, I mean, with so many very difficult things happening in this country, with mm -hmm. so many things happening on the international stage, mm -hmm. what is the motivation here? I mean, it, it really defies logic. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I, I echo what Michael has said, and, and I think I've, I've lost faith in that position. Um, you know, I, I am somebody who, who has, has always had a fascination, a tremendous respect for our elected officials, mm -hmm. and the person that's in that position now doesn't live up to the standard of the president. And I think that that's what's making so many people really disgusted with this whole process. Let me give Jeff the last word on this. We could do it in about 25 seconds. What's your sense of, does the country really need this right now as far as you're concerned, well, or is it? No. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I think 1974, Gerald Ford said impeachment is whatever the majority in Congress says it is. And I'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. This does not rise, at least what we know, right. to the standard of impeachment. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it goes down, folks. This conversation is most certainly going to continue. You can always chat with us during the week on Facebook. Just search New Mexico and Focus. We have to take a break right now. In a moment, MMA coach Greg Jackson.